Okay, so we're gonna show you how to take a third member out of an axle housing. I'm not gonna physically do the work, but we'll point out step by step what needs to be done in order to remove the third member from the axle. First thing as always, take your tires off. Next step, drain the oil. While that's going on, I'll take the uh, drive line off, just these four bolts here. And then I usually take a piece of tie wire or something and hang hang the drive line up out of the way so it's so it's clear. Uh, next step, take a, take some clamps, like some pipe clamps, clamp your brake line. Because on Toyotas especially, you have to take your brake, your brake line apart over here. Take your brake lines out, then you take these four bolts off. The whole backing plate, drums, everything, axle slides out of the out of the differential. Make sure and disconnect your e-brake as well. Different makes and models have different ways of doing it. This one you have to, have to take this off. Other ones, it'll be a it'll be a line. You just have to unbolt the line from the from the spring. Once you have the axles backed off far enough to get the third member out, you take these nuts off. There's washers behind them, and then this should come out. Sometimes you may have to hit on it with a dead blow hammer to break it loose. But once you break the seal out, you just pull it out, and and all the all the fun stuff happens on the bench. All right, so now we have the third member on the bench. First thing you want to do, you want to mark your caps. Now you notice this one's a bridged cap. There's only one cap, basically, but you still want to mark it because these are machined only one way. So you can flip this over 180 and and, and you'll have a problem. So you always want to put a mark on it to make sure that you have your caps back on the way they go. Just take a take a punch and a hammer. You just make a mark. One on the housing, one on the cap. That way you know that this one goes there. So next, take your caps off. Now this style third member uses shims. So what you wanna do, especially if you're reusing this gear, take your shims out, but keep them, keep your, keep your right side on your right side, your left side on your left side. There you go. Next thing, we'll take the carrier off the, uh, or the ring gear off the carrier. <laughs> Taking the ring gear off the carrier. Sometimes, depending on depending on what make or model, the ring gear will just fall off at this point. But if 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 it doesn't, there's a couple options you have to, to knock this off. You, either you can use a, a, a soft a brass hammer and tap the ring gear off. Or what I prefer is I actually have a punch and I actually go down through the ring gear bolt hole, make sure it's not touching the threads because of course you don't want to damage the threads and then you just hit it off. And I always go back and forth on it. Not reusing the bearings, take them off. Check, make sure you got the right size so that it's actually pulling on the on the right part of the bearing. And again, we do have a video that gives you a little more in depth on how to use this. This is also a good way to tell if your carrier is, has been spun or not. If the bearing comes off really easy, you know that the, uh, the bearing has been spinning on the journal. Same thing on the other side. Next step, we're gonna take the pinion out of the, out of the housing. Throw it on the floor. <laughs> okay, this is an important part. When driving the pinion out, you you do not want to hit the pinion head directly, especially with a with a with a steel hammer. It's easy enough. You can use a maybe a dead blow and it might come out, but I prefer using a a, a punch. Uh, this is actually, I think we we just made this, but any kind of any kind of large punch like maybe or a, a brass punch would work as well. And, and strike it directly on the pinion. Uh, the reason why you don't want to hit it with a, with a hammer is 
if you're gonna reuse this pinion, you're gonna mushroom the end of the pinion here and you won't be able to put the nut on. There you go. Now's a good time to check for any, any grooves on the yoke. If they're too deep, you'll never get it to seal. See, you got a little bit of a line there. This one's actually, this one's okay. I would reuse this and it wouldn't be a problem, but you'll actually find on, on some on high mileage uh, differentials, the, the rubber seal will actually eat a groove into the yoke and then it, it, it won't reseal. So there you go. There's the pin. Next, we'll take the seal out and all the bearings. Uh, pry bar with a, with a good hook on it. Uh, seems to work best for getting seals out. Of course, this one's being stubborn. There we go. Okay, so for driving out the pinion uh, bearings, we have a race punch here. Any, any punch will work if you got it, as long as it's got a nice ed edge on it. Um, these are actual race punches. They're designed for this. But you just want to get down in here. I don't know if you can, if you can film inside here. Trying to grab the edge there. Yeah, you see the edge of the, you see the, you see where the, here. You see where the edge of the, of the bearing is right there. Mm -hmm. You're wanting to get right on there. Yep. Um, if you plan on reusing the bearings, you don't need to do this. But with some instances, and, and you'll see it on this one, the, the, the depth shim is actually behind that race. And if you need to adjust your uh, pinion depth, you have to uh, take extra cu uh, care on knocking the race out so that you don't damage it. I usually go back and forth the same way I, I took the ring gear off. There you go. So see there's your depth shim. Um, it can either go behind the race here or some applications it goes between the bearing and the pinion head right here. This particular race has a nice chamfer on it so there's no there's no damage from the uh, from the punch but some 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 bearings they actually come out to quite the point right here and you'll you'll chip the you'll chip the race with the punch if you're not careful next flip it over same thing on this one these usually come out pretty easy and there you go and the final step is getting is pulling the bearing off of the pinion and for that we'll go over to the press for this we use a splitter it seems to work the best Sometimes you just you're stuck with no other option but to cut the bearing off. But if at all possible, save yourself some time and a lot of headache. Just use a puller. So that's complete disassembly of a of a third member style housing or a differential.